Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwebrin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to route the pixel extended ROM using matches and then the steps to pass the net test as well. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. So first off, as you might be aware, the two generic method of routing a custom ROM are by side loading the matches zip file using the AOSP recovery or by extracting the boot IMG, then patching it by a matches and flashing it by a firewood command. This is a lengthier approach as opposed to the magic side load, which only takes a few seconds. However, the magic side load does not work in some custom ROM, and unfortunately, that is the case with the pixel extended ROM as well. So, I have just tried doing the magic side load with the pixel extended ROM, and as you could see, the update was not successfully done. So, as of now, you cannot root the pixel extended ROM using the magic side load. Even in the CMD window, you will not be able to do the side load keyword. And as you could see on our phone, we are getting this error message. So in short, when it comes to routing the pixel extended ROM, you cannot do the side load matches process. Instead, you have to take the matches patch boot process. So with that said, let's get started. So first and foremost, you have to install the Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract it onto your PC. You could extract them whenever you want. I have done the extraction in eDrive, and these are the files of the platform code folder. You could see. So, once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging on your phone. This is required to execute ADB command. So, let's now enable USB debugging. So, go to settings menu, and from here, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Now, go back, go to system. You should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. With this, debugging is now enabled. So let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to the platform folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside the platform folder as you could see. So now type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone. And use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to extract the boot IMG file from the pixel extended ROM. So go to the folder where you have downloaded the ROM. In my case, this is the pixel extended ROM. It will be in a zip format. So simply extract this ROM file. And once you have done the extraction, so just a minute. So once you have done the extraction, you will get all these files. Let me show you. Out of this file, we only need the payload.bin file. So copy this payload.bin file and keep it handy. Next up, you now have to download the Fastboot Enhanced tool. So refer to my guide and download the tool. Once you have done so, extract the tool to anywhere on your PC. So let me show you. I have done the extraction on my PC. These are the files of the Fastboot Enhanced tool. Make sure to extract them onto your PC. Once you have done the extraction, you now have to extract, copy the payload bin file from the pixel extended custom ROM and paste this file inside the Fastboot Enhance folder. So just to repeat, download Fastboot Enhance, extract them onto your PC, then extract the custom ROM, get hold of the payload.bin file, copy it and now paste the file inside the Fastboot Enhance folder. Once that is done, launch the Fastboot Enhance tool using the exe file and the tool will now load within a few seconds. So then go to the payload dumper tab and click on browse and now you have to Upload the payload.bin file, so select it and click on open. And it will now load the file within a few seconds. Now go to the partition tab and select the boot partition and click on extract image. Now select the location, so let's now choose desktop and click OK. One of the biggest advantage of this tool is you don't need to extract the entire payload.bin file. You can simply extract the boot IMG and the process stands complete. If you are using Python command, then you might have to extract all the files first. But in case of this tool, you could extract individual file as well. And so with this, we have got the boot file on extracted. So let me now show you. Go to the de desktop and the file should be there. So this is the boot IMG file. So copy this stock boot IMG file. It's the boot IMG file from the custom ROM which is currently installed onto your phone. So copy this boot IMG file and paste it onto your phone. So let's go to our phone. If your phone is not visible on your PC, it's not an issue. Simply expand the notification section. Expand the Android system and under charging this device by USB, select file transfer. But this your phone will not be visible on your PC. So let's now 
copy the boot IMG file onto our phone. So with this, we have got the boot IMG file. Next up, you now also have to transfer the Magis APK file onto your phone. So quickly download the Magis file from my guide. So let me open it at the time of recording. The latest version is 26.1. So go to my guide and jump over to the Magis 26.1 version and you can download the APK file from here. Likewise, I've also linked the official change log from GitHub. You will refer to the official change log from here and download the APK file from here. Once you've got the APK file, make sure to transfer the APK file onto your phone as well. So as of now, you should be having both the boot IMG file from the custom ROM which is correctly installed onto your phone and the Magis APK file onto your phone. Once you have both this file onto your phone, let's now proceed ahead and install the Magis app onto your phone. So launch the files app and now select the Magis file and let's install it as well. So select the Magis APK and tap on settings then enable allow from this source and hit install. The Magis app will now be installed in a few seconds. And once that is done, we will now patch the app boot IMG file. So launch the Magis app. Now type on install next to Magis and select the patch of file. Now you have to choose the boot IMG file of the custom ROM. Select it and tap on let's go. Magis will now patch the file and place it in the downloads folder on your phone as you can see from here. So let's now access this folder using our PC. And so let me go to my phone and then go to the internal storage. Then let's go to the downloads folder and as you can see we have got the magic patch file so copy the magic patch file from your phone and place it inside the platform code folder on your pc once that is done let's now rename this file to something shorter so that it becomes easier to type in cmd window so something shorter and more meaningful as well so i am renaming it to magic underscore patch underscore boot so the complete name becomes magic patch boot dot img once that is done you now have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and then you have to boot your phone using this patch boot IMG file. So let's now carry out this task to so open CMD window inside platform tool folder and now type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. Your phone should now boot to fast boot mode in a few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead with the next step as well. So let's just wait for a phone to boot to the fast boot mode and then we will flash this file as well. So just a minute, let me access the platform boot folder from here. And as you could see, our phone is now in the fast boot mode. Before moving any ahead, do note that this screen might vary depending on the phone that you're using. This fast boot screen for, is for Xiaomi phones or to be more specific, the new Redmi phones and the Poco series. So anyways, moving on, open CMD window inside platform boot folder and now type in fast boot devices and make sure you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install a fast boot device onto your phone onto your PC, rather I have made a guide on the same, you can refer to my guide and please make sure to install those passport drivers. Once you have installed the drivers, use the Windows X shortcut key to select device manager. Now expand the Android phone section and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this and the serial ID next to passport devices signify that the phone is now in the passport mode and you could now move ahead and boot our phone using the Magis Patch Boot IMG file. So type in passport boot and the name of the file which is Magisk just a minute matches underscore patch underscore boot dot img and hit enter our phone should now boot to the patch boot img file so as of now i am just doing a temporary boot i am not doing flashing it permanently because it's always recommended that you first check out if the file is working or not so we will do a temporary boot if everything is working well and good then we will obtain a permanent root on the other hand if something is wrong with the file then just a simple restart will rectify all the issue. So with that said, let's now unlock my phone. And now if I launch the Magis app, so let's just wait for a few seconds for the app to load and then we'll proceed ahead. So now tap on install next to Magis. As of now, our phone is rooted, but it's just root, rooted for one time usage because we have just used the boot command. So let's now make the root permanent. For that, tap on install next to Magis and select direct install and tap on let's go. Magis will now flash the boot IMG file and it will then root our phone permanently. Once that is done, you now have to tap on the reboot button. So tap on reboot and your phone should now reboot to the rooted OS. So as I was telling, it's always recommended to use the fastboot boot and you should never use the fastboot flash command because if something is wrong with the Magis patch boot file, then your phone might undergo a boot loop or in a 
break state and it might not recover. However, if you are using the boot command and if something is wrong with the magic patch file, then you just need to do a simple restart and upon the next restart, the patch boot will be replaced by the normal boot file and your phone will be up and running once again. So keep in mind to always use the boot command and never use the flash command. With that said, let's now launch the magic cap. And as of now, as you could see, our phone is now rooted by Magisk and it's on the latest version. To verify the same, I am using a third party app. You can install the app from Play Store. The name of the app is Root Checker. So let's install the app and verify the same via that as well. So it will only take a few seconds. Let's now launch the app and tap on Agree, get started. And let's now tap on Verify Root. As you could see, we are now getting the Magisk prompt. So tap on Grant. And with this, our phone is now rooted by Magisk. So guys, as you might be aware, upon rooting the phone, it might trip the safety net test as well. And as a result of this, you will not be able to use any banking and payment app. So to rectify this issue, you will have to pass the safety net test. So let's now check out how this could be done. But before that, let me show you my current phone status. So for that, I'm using the Yasnak app. You could install the app from Play Store. So let's launch the install the Yasnak app and now go online and tap on run safety net attestation. So as you could see, I am now failing both the tests, the basic integrity and CTS profile match test. So our ultimate aim will be to pass both these tests. So with that said, let's get started. First and foremost, you have to hide the magic cap onto your phone. So for that, launch the magic cap. Let me bring the app to the home drawer. So launch the magic cap. Tap on the settings icon at the top right, and then tap on hide the magic cap. Now enable the toggle next to allow from this source, and then go back. And you now have to rename the app to something else. I am doing a rename to Droidwin. You go rename it to anything you want. And now tap on OK. So it will now hide the Magisk app in a few seconds. And the process is now complete. It's asking for a shortcut. I don't want a shortcut. So I'm tapping on cancel. And with this, you could see there is no Magisk app onto our phone. And there is no app icon as well. From now onwards, our Magisk app is the Droidwin app. So once that is done, let's now install the systemless host module onto our phone. So for that, launch the magic cap, which in my case is not Droidwin. Tap on the settings icon at the top right and now just tap on systemless host. But this the module is now added. So go back, go to module and you, you should see that the module is now up and running. Next up, you now have to enable Digest onto your phone as well. So launch the magic cap and currently as you could see, it's showing as no next to Digest. So we will now have to enable Digest. So tap on the settings icon and enable the toggle next to Digest. It will now ask you to restart your phone. We will not do a restart now. We will do a restart after flashing a module. So go to the next step and now download the module. It's the safety net fix module. And once you have done the download, place the module onto your phone. And let's now flash this module. So go launch the magic app, go to modules, tap on install from storage, and let's now select the module and flash it. So it's the safety net fix module. Tap on OK and the module will now be flashed. Once that is done, tap on reboot and our phone should now reboot. And with this, the module will be flashed and the digest will also be enabled. So let's just wait for a phone to boot up to the OS and then we will verify the same as well. And after that, we'll move ahead to the next step. So the boot up will take only a few additional seconds. So let's wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead to the next step. So it's now loading and but this our phone is now about to boot to the OS. So let me now unlock my phone. And if I launch the Magisk app, as you could see, it's showing as yes next to Zygisk. So Zygisk is now enabled. Likewise, go to modules and you could see the universal safety and fix module is now up and running. So as of now, the Zygisk should be enabled on your phone as well. And you should have both the modules enabled and running. With that said, you will now have to enable deny list and then configure it as well. So go to the Magisk app, tap on the settings icon. And now you have to tap enforce deny list. Then tap on configure the deny list and with this you now have to hide the root from the following three apps these are the, and also the fourth app if it's there on your custom rom the app is only there on some custom rom so we will verify that as well so first and foremost let's hide the root from the following three apps so tap on the overflow icon at the top right and check mark show system now let's first search for the google play service app so expand it and make sure to enable the toggle next to all the services likewise do the same for the google play store as well then the third app is Google Service Framework. So let's search for the Framework app and enable the toggle next to that as well. Fourth one is the Google Play Protect Service. So let me search if it's there on this custom ROM or not. So 
this app is not there on our phone so you only have to hide the root from the following three apps and once that is done you now have to hide the root from the banking and payment app of your choice so do so and once that is done you now have to remove the data of all these apps so let's now remove the data of these apps for that go to the settings menu on your phone from there go to apps see all apps tap on the auto icon and select show system so first off let's search for the play service go to a storage and cache section tap on manage space tap on clear all data and tap on ok next up is the google play store so let's search for the play store app now go there go to storage and cache tap on clear storage and tap on delete then is the google service framework app so let me search for the framework app as well so go there go to storage and cache tap on clear storage and tap on delete once that is done you now have to remove the data of the banking and payment of your choice as well once you remove that data as well then you now have to perform a restart this restart is compulsory so tap on restart and your phone should now go to the os and with this our task stands complete there is just one more important thing that i would like to discuss so let's wait for the phone to go to the os i would discuss that important point and then we will check out the test result so it should only take a few more seconds while you are flashing the module and carrying out the steps to hide the safety net in those cases the boot up might take a few additional seconds that's completely normal and nothing to nothing to worry about as such so with that said our phone is now booted to the os so before moving ahead launch the magic cap tap on the settings icon and now go to the denied list section as you could see the google service framework is unchecked and the google play service is missing from this list so it's just a ui bug and nothing to worry about in the back end everything is working well and good so with that said let's now launch the yasnak app and make sure you are now online then tap on run safety net at the station and with this we are now passing both the tests and you could now easily use the banking and payment app of your choice as well so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries do leave them down in the comment section and please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching